We're going to talk about shapes of orbitals, and you may recall we've talked about three quantum numbers, n, l, and m sub l, and the shape comes from l, which is the angular momentum quantum number. And the shapes we're talking about refer to psi squared, because psi squared gives the probability of finding an electron in a certain location, and these shapes are where 90% of the psi squared function occurs. All right, so L is shape. So first we're going to talk about L equals 0, and then L equals 1, and on and on. Okay, so L equals 0 is what we call an S orbital. And an S orbital is one that is spherical. So this is a spherical orbital, round. And the higher the value of n, the larger the spherical orbital will be. So when n equals 1, the s orbital is the smallest. When n equals 2, it's bigger, and, and so on and so on. And remember that for every value of l, there are certain m sub l's, and for 0, l equals 0, the m sub l's are only 0. So there's no other value of m sub l. And you may also remember that m sub l refers to orientation. And since m sub l is 0, that means there's 0 orientation, which makes sense with a spherical orbital because it doesn't have any direction. It's the same in all directions. So it has no orientation in space. It's the same from every direction. All right, and then we'll go down to the next one, which is a p orbital. When l equals 1, you have a p orbital. And to help you remember it, it's roughly peanut shaped, but actually, in reality, it is two lobes of high electron probability. And then there is a node in the center of those two lobes that has um, no electron probability. And that node occurs at the nucleus of the atom. So the electron can be on one side of the atom or the other side of the atom, but not at the nucleus. All right, and remember there's three m sub l values when l equals 1, and those m sub l's, it can either be negative 1, 0, or positive 1, and those give the orientation. There are three orientations. And we usually, usually designate those in x, y, z space. So if this is our xy coordinate, then we have one orbital. I did not mean to do that. Let's erase that. Okay, let's go back to drawing mode. So we have an xy coordinate and we have lobe and another lobe. Okay, so if this is x and this is y, then this would be the p x orbital because it's directed in x, the direction of x. Okay, then there's another one that goes in the y direction. So that would be p y. And then since we talk in three dimensions, there would also be one, we'll put the third axis that way, I did not draw that so great, but the third lobe, or the third, third orbital, would direct out at you and back into the page, and that's referred to as the PZ. All right, so those are the three orientations. Next, we have L equals 2, and that's a D orbital, and that, those have M sub L values of, you may remember, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So it has five possible orientations. And we draw those five orbitals like this. Let's do our x, y axis again. And this d orbitals have even more lobes. I've done it again for some reason. OK, so the, d, the first d orbital I'm going to talk about, I don't know why I insist on doing that. It'll have four lobes. 
Okay, and that orbital is referred to as a dxy because it is in the, D, the xy plane. Okay, there's another set, and I'm going to just draw them without the axes. And this is three-dimensional, and this is the dxz. So imagine a coordinate system going through that that's in the x and z. And then there's a third one, of course, that is dyz. And, of course, you're going to have to imagine these in space. Okay, so these, the three of these, and I'll try to draw coordinates around them. That doesn't work so well. Um, you can probably find nice pictures of this in your book. There are two more orbitals, okay, and one of them has, is very similar ex to the dxy, except that in this case, the lobes are actually on the axes. Notice these lobes are in between axes. These lobes are on the axes. And this is dx squared minus y squared. And the final, the fifth orbital, uh, d orbital, has a kind of a belt in the middle. And this is in the z direction. And this is dz squared. So there are five total orbitals for the D, corresponding to the five M sub L values. All right, and L can be greater than two. It can be three, four, and beyond. And from that point on, we label them with letters of the alphabet starting at F. So it's F, G, H, et cetera, et cetera. And these will have still more lobes. So as L goes up, you have more and more lobes. You have no lobes for L equals zero, two lobes for L equals one, and uh, more as you go up. All right, so let's try some practice here. For these designations, I want you to list the n, the l, and the m sub l, all possible m sub l values for each of these. So stop the tape in between them, and I will start working. The 1s orbital is designated by n is 1, and s means l equals 0. So n is 1. L equals zero, and when L equals zero, the only possible M sub L's are zero. Okay, for the three P, N equals three. The P means that L equals one, and when L equals one, M sub L has three possible values. All right, we'll keep going. The five F, N equals five, the first number means how um, means the m value. F refers to what L is, so F tells you that L equals 3. And when L equals 3, your possible m sub L values are from negative 3 to positive 3, counting 1 at a time. Oops, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And finally, 2D. Well, it would look like n equals 2, and for D, we would say L equals 2. But the rule is that L could only be from 0 to n minus 1, so you can't have an L equals 2. So 2D does not exist. That was a trick question. The value of L cannot equal the value of n. All right, and another practice. Which set of qu quantum numbers below is valid for a 5F orbital? Okay, we just did that, so don't look back up there. Do it again. For a 5f, the n value is 5, so it could be one of these three, or it could be this one. The l value for an f orbital is 3, which narrows it to these two possibilities. And then look at the m sub l values. m sub l for l equals 3 will be from negative 3 to positive 3, so this one can't occur. So this is the correct um, designation for one possible 5f orbital. There are two more, um, no, there are six, six more possible m sub f value, um, orbitals because you can also have m sub l equals negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 
we have one and it can also have can't do it also can have um, two and three so it has all these possible ones this is one of the possibilities